River. No, well, now that we're all conscious here, uh, not all of us, but uh, well, a few of us have learned some stuff about breastfeeding and, and this and that. But now Nestle has taken their operations and their formulas and then hit the third world countries where they're completely just naive and just open arms and anything that's American and has a nice, pretty Nestle, plastic stuff. Nestle, uh, as a matter of fact, sort of took a pretty, pretty big hit from some very active political people, not unlike yourselves, not long ago to ensure that uh, so-called third world mothers as as knew what here. to do with the product. Are you there, caller? Hi. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I first want to commend... Uh, I don't have a lot of time, so I know you'll be brief. Okay. <laughs> but I would like to ask, how long have you guys been involved in such projects? And also, I'd like you to address the issues of celebrity involvement in um, such issues. We know yeah. that it's why kind of sheep. Why don't you tell us what you think of that? What do I think? Celebrity involvement. I think it's very important. I, I think that uh, um, as people who are mainstream and seen by America, they can get the ideas out and the information to people who do not know, like myself. <laughs> yes, and I'm can. very proud of them. I think these, I think Lisa has shown, and River and Raul have shown a considerable interest in today's society, and I commend them wholly on it. And I thank them as a young person. It's good to see other young people involved as well. Tell us about this. Uh, it is true we are seeing an increase in the number of politically active celebrities with special skew to uh, younger folks, including you, Raul. I don't want to be able to... <laughs> I'm going to take my yeah, tie Yeah, you better off. take your tie off. Uh, I, I, speak about this, and uh, I just, you know, we've got some people looking through the blinds and wondering who's a hot dog and who isn't. Well, and do you really know what you're talking about? If you're an actress, what do you know about nutrition and vaccines? Because we're people. You know, you, we, we separate the celebrity from the people. And, you know, and the thing about life here on Earth and success and glamour, you know, and then you attain it. And you're like, what do I have? You know, do I have a healthy family? Am I healthy? Still, our celebrities are dying of cancer and AIDS and this and that. Yeah. You know, we aren't separate from the realities and the, and the fear that exists on this planet. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we he are here as celebrities is because we, we can be here, whereas some of these people in the audience might not be invited. I think <clears throat> celebrity in, in involvement takes, uh, has two aspects. There's the celebrity involvement of the celebrity that comes out into the public and doesn't know much about what they're talking about, and they're just there to, to be seen. Mm -hmm. And you ask them questions, and they, well, I, 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 you know. So uh, <laughs> they're just there to, for their own celebrity. Yeah. Then there's the celebrity involvement that is really committed, that really studies the situation, right and becomes a master of his cause. Then it goes beyond charity. It's no longer charity, it's a stand that this person has taken, a commitment, and that's what's gonna make a difference, not just nice charity, my pet charity and, and all that and stuff. And we'll be back in just a minute. To be part of the audience, please send a postcard to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. Sir. I would like to uh, talk to Lisa Bonet. Uh, since yesterday was Easter, could you explain to us what you had for dinner? Sure. Um, I baked some bread, <laughs> and I made some coconut rice and some curried vegetables, some lentils with kale and carrots, and... Um, for dessert, I made a poppy seed cake. And this is okay with Lenny? He ate it up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sounds delicious. I respect Lisa's um, wanting to nurse her child. I have five that I nurse, too, and successfully. But what about the women that are not able to, that really want to, that are not able to? It sounds like well, you're Well, for medical reasons, them... they aren't able to, or why wouldn't they be they able to? to well, then... Lisa should know that we got ourselves in a kind of a militant unfortunate war here not long ago in which it was somehow women who didn't breastfeed were somehow felt were some felt that people were out there encouraging them to feel guilty and not about only it. that it's unacceptable in public there are people being thrown out of restaurants it's like we can't even accept our own bodies yeah now you that's know, the, a different issue and i think this we're on your but side the point is, you know but the point is that the breast has become a sexual thing True. rather than what it is you know it's to nourish our children but and this, of course it's also sexy no, but this but. <laughs> yeah. this woman uh this woman inquires about uh, those certain percentage of women 
for whom breastfeeding has not been a... Well, Phil, the thing is that there's no point in feeling guilty. You shouldn't feel guilty because if you eat meat, for example. It's not a question of guilt. Let's throw guilt out the window and take responsibility for our lives okay. and for creating a healthy world and healthy bodies and healthy children right. and a healthy society. Yeah. And if we join together at the heart and really right. make that commitment and take that stand like these celebrities are doing... Right. I don't think Lisa wants to kidnap people who use formula. Uh, and if the and if the mother is there and and the breast is uh, if breastfeeding isn't working, you know. Could I ask, some, can I, can I ask uh, well, John a question? John, uh, uh, you, I'm re in reading your book. There was a percentage that you said, even if people reduced their meat consumption yes. to a kind uh, like well, what it is is if the people of the United States reduced our consumption of meat by ten percent, just ten percent, which I think is a doable amount. That would free up enough grain to feed 60 million people for a year, which is more than the number of people who will die of starvation on right. the entire globe right. Now, this John, year. please don't call me a guy who rains on parades, but we already have food stuff which is capable of being used for this purpose and actually, is to be found in warehouses and silos. Actually, the, the So we do have to talk about down. how we're going to get what we have yes, from we our do. beloved bread basket yes, to the do. people who need it. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I have two fast questions. First of all, let me, let me uh, answer... We lots of people out here, Rob. Go ahead. Okay, uh, uh, give me a chance. <laughs> all right, let me answer that about getting the food where it goes. We have, for the first time in the history of humanity, been able to avert famines. The last African famine that we had was averted by the commitment of people, not only in the United States, but all over the world, that got the food where it was needed, except for maybe 2%. So it's a myth that the food doesn't get where it goes. Now, what we need to understand also is the difference between famine and chronic persistent hunger. Famine is only 10% of the people that die every day of starvation. The people, the, 90, the other 90% of the 35 to 40,000 people that die every day as a consequence of hunger are people who are living in chronic persistent hunger that don't look uh, starving, that don't look emaciated like we used to think of starvation. These are people that look normal. All they have is malnutrition, but out of malnutrition, these people get all kinds of curable diseases, and this is the majority of the people that are dying constantly every day from chronic persistent hunger and not famine. Over here. We, okay. I have two questions. One is to River. What do you wash your clothes in? If you're environmental, yeah. Yeah. how do you oh, wash your clothes? And while you're answering that, Lisa, what about the diapers? And dispose of I have of diapers service. Water. Water. You have a diaper service, so you use, use fabric diapers and they're recycled, it's fine. Okay. Yes. I never uh, had vaccinations River. growing up. You what? A as a living example, and neither of my brothers and sisters. I know, but I'm, I just figured I'd clear that one up. <laughs> but now... You haven't you. been vaccinated. No, I haven't, but she didn't ask that. So, so as, as you were saying, and that the question was, do I use deodorant? No. <laughs> I, I asked, how do you wash your clothes and how do you dispose how do you, oh, of yes, the water? Yes. If My mom has this great Where's mailing list go, for, for, for biodegradable and, and good detergents that are just a little more expensive but are very, very um, concentrated so you can water it down and it ends up, Lots even of when questions. I get around. Lots of questions here. Whenever I can. We got lots of people, please, if we tighten them up. Yes. I was just wondering how you first got very involved in doing this and the ecology and how you learned more about it, talking to By River hearing and about it from people like you seeing, or whoever. Seeing. You seeing see the water, you see the clouds dying. in the skies and the smog. You see the waters running dr running brown instead of clear. And you feel the lack of health everywhere in the, in yes. the world. You feel the suffering that's being caused and it's getting worse. And you just want to do something. You say, how can I pretend it's not happening? And, and listening to your body. We'll be back in just a moment.